Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net, and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a snow globe with a cabin. I did this on a black canvas, so you can easily do this too. I often will use a mess up painting, so this is one of those uh, canvas panels, and you just simply add one coat of black paint. It could be any black paint. Sometimes I use the Liquitex Mars Black, gives it kind of a shiny appearance. Or sometimes if I want the matte flat look, I'll use the Apple Barrel black paint. So any kind of paint, one coat in your canvas is covered and it's an easy way to recycle paintings. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and you can also buy canvases that are pre-painted black if you wanna do that too. We are going to go ahead and get started. So there's no traceable for this, but it's a very simple drawing. So after we paint it black, let it dry, we're gonna draw the composition of the snow globe. And I used a circle to trace. You can use a compass if you prefer that, um, but this is a bowl and it's about six inches in diameter. You can find something similar. It doesn't have to be exactly six inches. It could be seven inches, it could be four inches. It also depends on the size canvas that you're working on. So if you're using a large 16 by 20 canvas, you'll want a larger circle. So you wanna go ahead and trace your circle. I am using just a regular piece of white chalk. It erases as we paint. And in the very center of the canvas, so find, um, kind of estimate where the center is and trace the circle. And then you want to go ahead and draw the base of the snow globe. So it's kind of a trapezoid type of shape that's curved on the sides. It's kind of helpful to use a ruler. So I'm not measuring this, but I am lining it up with the side of the canvas so that the points of these of this part, the top part of the base, are kind of lining up. So like right here lines up with the line that I did. And then right here. I'm going to make sure that it's not lopsided so it kind of is even on both sides. The bottom part is not flat, it's curved, so that's why I removed the ruler, but both of those lines on the side line up, so a curved line. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it can also be adjusted when, as we paint it in. So very simple shape two shapes and we have a couple different lines for our snow, so our snow globe is on the snow and we can go ahead and kind of draw our little snow line so this is a loose wavy line that goes behind the base on both sides and then right here another line kind of under that so we have two wavy lines for our snow and then I'm going to do an optional step. I'm going to add some shading to the background of this. If you don't want to do this, that's fine. It does give the snow globe a little bit of contrast because we're going to add some lighter color on the sides of the canvas and keep it relatively dark around the snow globe. So I am going to load Mars Black and Titanium White on my palette. I'm going to make a medium gray color. I'm going to use my three quarter flat brush and I'm going to paint in circular direction around the snow globe. I'm going to start on the edges of the canvas. So this is as light as, as it's going to get. It should be like a dark to medium gray. And then I'm going to paint in circular strokes so that it goes around the snow globe. And then I'm going to add black to it. So it's almost like I'm painting a kind of a swirly background. Um, if you follow me closely, I do a lot of moon paintings where that moon is in the center and I do a blended thing around the sky. It's kind of like that. Um, again, you want to add that lighter color closest to the edge. You don't want this to be too light, so just a very subtle kind of light gray. And you don't even have to cover it completely because the canvas is already painted black, so we don't have to add more black. But you do need to add more black towards the around the snow globe so that the sky is darkest in the center and lightest towards the edges. So just very gently blend that in. It gives some more interest in the sky. If you do this and you don't like it, you can always just paint it over black and say, nope, don't wanna do that to the background. So that's kind of optional. Okay. 
And that's all I'm doing to the background for now. I'll add snow dots in a very later step. But then next, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the snow on the ground. So the snow is done in a couple layers throughout this tutorial. This is the first layer and it's just titanium white. So you wanna go ahead and rinse all that gray off your brush, dry it, and then load the tip of your brush. This is the three quarter inch flat wash brush, by the way. Um, and you wanna start at the line that we drew, the top part of the line. And you wanna do kind of short, choppy, horizontal strokes and then just kind of drag it down to the bottom. I kind of made the paint run out towards the bottom so it looks slightly darker at the bottom. You can do that too, and if you don't wanna do that or if your paint is not doing that, that's fine. But it just needs to be a relatively thin layer of paint. That means that a lot of that black, especially towards the bottom, is still kind of showing through and that's okay. It's kind of like we're priming this first layer of snow. Um, but the back part is the brightest and it just kind of slowly fades away as it goes to the bottom. You want to paint around the snow globe base. You don't want to paint over it. We don't want to lose that shape. So just left and right, short strokes, kind of going all the way across. Paint around the globe base. Bring it down very gently. And next we're going to focus exclusively on the center part of our circle. So we're gonna get everything that's inside the snow globe painted in. And I will be using a number four round brush to start with. And we're gonna start at the bottom. So there's snow on the ground in our snow globe. And I'll be using titanium white. So this is the number four round brush in titanium white. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint a ground area in the snow globe on the bottom of the circle. I am leaving a very tiny slither of black kind of on the inside circumference of the circle. So I'm trying not to get this all the way to my chalk line that I drew. But if it does, go to the chalk line and kind of just try not to go outside of the circle and also try to leave a tiny slither of black on the inner part, like an inner border of the um, circle. So about a quarter inch, to three quarter inches to an inch area of snow at the bottom of your circle, depending on the size of your circle. So that's your ground, solid white, no shading or anything special like that, just a solid white ground area of snow. And then we're going to go ahead and load our palette with raw umber, cad yellow medium, freshen up your titanium white if you need to, and you'll need some burnt sienna, which is an optional brown color later, and I'll tell you why. Um, so this raw umber is a cool brown, but if you want your cabin to be more of a warm brown, you can add the burnt sienna to it, which is more of a reddish brown. Before we start painting this cabin in, we're gonna go ahead and draw it with a piece of chalk. And um, you could wait until your snow on the bottom is dry, but I'm just gonna kind of try to work around it because I'm not really drawing over the snow. I'm drawing the cabin so it's kind of resting on top of that snow line. And we're gonna be very basic about this. If you wanna do something more complex, you're welcome to, but this is gonna be very, very basic. So I did a roof. So like a triangular shape and then the two vertical lines on each side for the sides of the cabin. I'm using a 12 bright brush, that's a flat brush, that's about a half inch wide. And I'm mixing this golden cool brown on my palette. So I have a little bit of brown mixed with white. The white is important to get that brown to lighten up because raw umber is a very dark brown color. And then a little bit of yellow to kind of warm it up. So it's kind of a cool golden brown, if that makes any sense. And I'm basically just painting the cabin in. So I'm using the tip of the brush to outline the roof. And then using the full width of the brush to paint horizontal strokes. Horizontal is important here because we're going to create a log texture on the front face of the cabin. Um, so dragging it horizontally. I also vary that color. So I grab some more of that darker brown versus that lighter brown I mixed on the palette. I'm just letting it kind of blend with that lighter brown as well. So using the tip of the brush to outline your 
diagonal and vertical lines and full width strokes on the inside front face of the cabin and you're dragging it across horizontally and we can paint this base so I extended that base of the cabin down so it kind of overlaps our snow area in a later step we'll take that snow and we'll let it overlap the base of the cabin again so we'll bring that snow up a little bit higher but for now we want to just kind of concentrate on filling this in and you can see how those colors are just kind of um, mixing together Brown tends to be a fairly translucent color, so you'll still see a lot of that black showing through. It'll be dark. If it's too dark right now, you can add a little bit more white to it to kind of brighten it up. But we will be doing another layer on this to create that log texture. Right now, I'm just filling that in. So for the log texture, you could do this before this dries, but if it's too saturated right now, you might wanna dry it and then come back to it. But use black on the tip of the brush. So I didn't even rinse the brush to do this. I just grabbed the black and using the very, very tip of that brush to create black lines that are going across to create that log texture. So horizontal black lines starting from the peak, working the way down. And that starts your log texture. Um, if you don't like the way the bright brush is working for you, you can do that with a round brush or even a paint pen if you wanna do black lines with a paint pen. Um, but you'll need to let your cabin dry if you're gonna do it that way. Um, so I want more of a warm brown in my cabin. Um, this is optional. So this is burnt sienna. It's kind of a warm reddish brown. I'm just gonna go in and kind of mix some of this reddish brown into my cabin. So I loaded that reddish brown onto my brush. I'm gonna mix a little bit of white into it, kind of lighten it up. So white and burnt sienna. And just between those lines, I don't wanna go over my black lines because it's gonna smear it and then make it all look muddy, but between the lines for my cabin, log lines, doing the reddish brown mixed with the white. Again, kind of not letting it blend all the way between those lines. Keep in mind this is a really tiny cabin, the grand scheme of things. It's inside a globe, which is in kind of a very simple snowy landscape scene. So we don't have to be too detailed with the cabin, but we want to make it look nice and pretty. So I'm going to do the chimney next. Set my 12 bright brush aside, grab my four round brush, and just paint what I drew with the chalk. So I can use any of these browns. I'm just gonna grab the burnt sienna and the white. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint the chimney in. So vertical little lines, and then horizontal line. Very, very basic. Next, I'm going to do the snow on the roof. So grabbing some white, you might need to freshen up some of your titanium white, this should be pure white. I'm gonna use the round brush, kind of a thick sort of wobbly stroke going in that same angle on the roof. You can overlap your snow, so your snow will overlap a slither of that top part of that brown. Just, um, if it's, if the snow is turning brown because your roof isn't dry, you may want to dry that or come back to this step in a later step after it that has dried because we want this to be pure white. There's snow on top of the chimney as well. Next, I'm going to start painting these Christmas trees in. So we're going to go ahead and load our palette with Hooker's Green Hue Permanent using the number four round brush. You can use some of that yellow too, the uh, yellow, the cad yellow, if you want kind of a yellowish green color. Um, but I do recommend that you mix white into it. So I almost did equal parts white and green, maybe a little bit more green than white. Um, but that white is necessary for this to show up because we're working on a dark background. So you need to utilize that white to get that color to be opaque and have coverage. So I'm gonna do very basic trees uh, starting to the right of the cabin. So I'm starting at the top and doing like a little point at the top and then stroking down to each of these branches, just taking that round brush and stroking down, creating rows of branches. As I'm working my way down, I'm forming the, the 
triangular conical shape of the tree so it's getting wider and wider as I go down. I'm going to do my best to go around the cabin and then go all the way to the base of that snow. And then I'm going to go ahead and repeat this and create a total of four trees. So I did two on the right and two on the left of the cabin. So this one is a thinner tree. Just want to make sure that you don't go outside of your circle. So everything needs to be painted on the inside. It's on the inside of the snow globe. This one, I'm just varying the heights. So they're not all the same height or not all the same widths. So this one is also going slightly behind the cabin. And then I'll do a fourth tree. The base of these trees slightly overlap our snow a bit. If you want to do more trees, you can. If you want to do more details, like a moon in the sky, Santa's sleigh, if you want to do a snowman, um, a mailbox, a fence, you're welcome to add all those little details. I'm just going to do cabin and four trees and little snow dots. So when our front face of the cabin is dry, um, you want to go ahead and we're going to do the windows and door. So completely rinse your round brush off and dry it and we're going to use titanium white. So our door is red and our windows are kind of an orangish yellow color, but we need to do an opaque white layer first on this before we can do our colored layer. Um, so we're going to go ahead and paint a rectangle shape on the bottom for the door. A little circle in the attic area for this window. And then two more square rectangular windows. Of course, you can um, make this a little bit more complex if you prefer. And tiny area painting this in. I'm going to make that door a little bit higher. And then another window on the right. And then I'm going to do my little snow dots. So if you want to do this with a toothbrush, toothbrush to make little tiny flecks of snow, you're welcome to. I'm just going to use my round brush for this. Um, so little white dots of snow throughout the snow globe. You want to make them so that they're not all evenly spaced apart. So some are closer. So we have some clusters that are closer together, some that are more further apart. You want to kind of vary the size of your dots. So some are bigger, some are slightly smaller. And then you can add snow to your trees. So if your trees are dry, um, you can go ahead and... So what I do is I kind of do rows of white and kind of skip a row so there's green showing through. You don't want to cover up all your green. You want to do, I like to start at the bottom so I just kind of stroke down kind of the same way I created the tree but doing a white layer of branches. So I just stroke down and create rows of white starting from the bottom and working my way to the top. So I'm going to do that to each of the trees. Next, I am going to actually outline the snow globe. So our circle is still chalk. And at this point, we want that to be paint. We don't want that chalk is going to not stay permanent if we leave it just chalk. So we're gonna go ahead and use our number four round brush, titanium white. You can slightly water down that white so it helps to get it to be a little bit flowy because the white's kind of a chunky, thick color. So adding a teeny bit of water in that really helps with the flow. Um, you just don't wanna thin it down too much. Um, and you're just taking that white on the tip of the brush and we're outlining our chalk line. As you're outlining, a lot of that chalk is erasing, um, but not all of it will. So after we outline and let that dry, we can take a soft baby wipe 
and erase our chalk line or even a wet paintbrush, clean wet paintbrush will erase, but we cannot do that until this dries. We'll go ahead and outline our circle, trying to keep that line fairly consistent, but it does not need to be perfect. And again, a little slither of black is on the inner circumference of that circle. It's, it's not really noticeable in the sky area, but on the ground area where that snow is, there's a little slither of black still showing through. We did that on purpose. So outlining this and trying to keep the same thickness throughout and going all the way around. And if you need to clean that up later with black paint, you can. You just want to make sure that white dries before you do anything else to it. So at this point, our windows and door should be dry. If it's not, you can come back to this step later or use a blow dryer to dry that real quick. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint my door red. This is naphthol crimson hue. You can use literally any red. You can change the color of the door if you don't want a red door. Um, and for the windows, I did cad yellow medium. So I just painted that window yellow. And then I wanted a little bit of an orange glow to it. So I mixed some red into that and just added a little bit of red on the top, mixed it with the yellow. So it's kind of like an orange color on the top and a little bit more brighter towards the bottom. So I did orange top of the window, yellow towards the bottom. Gives it more of a glowing look. The attic window, I did yellow as well. Add a little bit more of that reddish orange color at the top of this window. And next we're going to do the chimney smoke. So you want to go ahead, rinse the round brush again, dry. And I'm going to do this dry brush style. So that means load the paint, load the brush in the white, have a towel ready. So I have my little rag in the upper right that I wipe my brush off so that only a little bit of paint is left on the brush. So as I reload, I wipe so that only a little paint is left. I'm just doing little sketchy kind of strokes to form the direction of the smoke. So you can see it's a very translucent layer. It's not bright white like the, the snow on the roof. You see how opaque and bright that is. This is not that. This is very translucent and see-through because there's only a teeny tiny bit of paint on my brush. And if I want it to look more like smoke, I can take my finger, kind of smear it, or I can use my brush to smear it as well. So I'm just kind of turning that into more smoke. And as you smear it, I'm not adding more paint to this. I'm kind of pushing the paint around, spreading it around. Um, so it kind of, um, spreads out and you can see more of that black showing through. So it's a very translucent layer to make that smoke effect. I'm going to go ahead and dry my painting next because the next things I want to do, I just want to make sure my snow globe, everything on the inside is dry and then my outside circle that I traced is dry as well. So you can use a blow dryer to dry your paintings or this is a good part to kind of take a break and come back. Um, but after everything is dry, I'm going to go ahead and use a soft wet baby wipe. I want to erase my chalk. So any of those chalk lines that are showing are going to be erased. It's going to clean up that area of the circle. It should be um, solid black around the circle. I'm going to erase any chalk lines that are showing on my cabin. You don't want to erase the chalk lines of the base of your snow globe because we haven't painted that in yet. So keep those lines for now. And since our windows and door are dry, I'm going to use the round brush. So number four round brush and Mars black. I want to outline my window frames and do the little um, window pane lines as well. It's a very, very detailed step. So if you need to use a smaller brush, you are welcome to. Um, but I like to kind of twist my brush to get that paint right there on the tip of the brush when I'm going to do fine lines. Um, a Sharpie or a black paint pen would be good for this step as well if you like to have a little bit more control. And so I'm just outlining the door 
the outer edge of the door and I'm going to outline my windows as well. A little dot for the door handle and then outline the shape of the windows. And then a plus sign on the inside of the window. Again, very, very light hand for this because it's such a tiny detail. Outline the window, plus sign on the inside. I'm going to do the same thing for the circle. And then the vertical lines on the left and the right of our cabin. And then I am going to go ahead and bring my snow level up so that it's overlapping the base of the cabin. So I rinsed my brush off, grabbed my white, and I need some more titanium white on my palette. I'm just going to take that snow, bring it up so that it overlaps in my overlap part of your door in the base of the cabin so it's not flat. There's a little bit of snow piling up. A little extra glowing effect. I'm going to grab that yellow. Just do little yellow blob lines kind of going in a vertical direction under the window. Kind of looks like the window lights are reflecting on the snow. Add little pops of bright yellow in there. So I have yellow and white on my brush. Little pops of bright yellow kind of in the bottom areas of the windows. Adds to that glowing effect as well. And if you want to add a little bit of yellow to the face of the cabin, teeny tiny bits of yellow. This could even be like dry brush style, but just under the windows it makes it look like that is also glowing on the face of the cabin. So it shouldn't be solid bright yellow. It should be a very, very translucent layer on the face. You don't want to alter the brown. It's just a very thin glowing yellow layer. So we are done with the inside part of our snow globe. I went ahead and rinsed my round brush off, sat it to the side, and we are going to paint the base of our snow globe with the color Ultramarine Blue. That's what I chose. If you want to do a different color, you're welcome to. And the number 12 bright brush, so that's that half inch wide flat brush. And I'm going to go ahead and paint this blue. So we want to go in a curved direction. This is going to create some form in that shape so it doesn't look flat. So painting that shape in, you may need to use the tip of the brush to outline the outer parts of that shape, but then on the inside part, it's going in a curved direction. So paint it all of that solid blue. It is not going to look opaque or bright because we did not add any white to that yet, but we will very soon here. So everything solid coat of the blue doesn't even have to give 100% coverage. If you still have black showing through, that's okay. It's gonna help create some shadow depth into it because we're using that black background as our darks. So I'm painting this solid. Again, some of that black is still showing through. So after you have your blue painted in, before this dries, you want to add a little bit of white to your brush, just the tip of the brush. You can mix it together on your palette if you're worried about it being too bright. And then just in the middle part, you're taking that white and blending it on the canvas with your blue, going in a curved direction. That curve is very important. That's going to create that kind of almost 3D look. And it's going to blend, mix with that blue. It's going to make it brighter, gives it form, depth. And you're not going to cover all the blue. You're going to leave a lot of dark still showing through. So I left dark mostly on the bottom and the left and the right of the base. And then use the tip of your brush to outline the edge of that, kind of define that shape. So that's kind of a light blue outline 
on both sides and on the bottom and you can see where that dark is on the left and the right and towards the bottom that I left. And then I'm going to add some blue to my snow. So I'm using this ultramarine blue to create some more color in my snow, specifically kind of a shadow color. Um, you only want to do this with a little bit of blue and a lot of white, but just on the bottom of your snow area. I'm just kind of um, adding this light blue color on the bottom and I'm going to load my palette with more white, grabbing that white and kind of bringing it up. So the bottom of my snow area has a bluish color and it quickly kind of turns into a brighter white color towards the top. I'm doing short kind of curvy choppy strokes to kind of create the impression that this is snow. So kind of curvy choppy not smooth up here towards the top it's brighter white. I'm going to make sure I go around my snow globe. In a later step we're going to bring a little bit of snow so that it overlaps the base of the, the snow globe to make it look like some snow is kind of piling up around it. Um, but we don't want to mess with that now because that blue is freshly painted and we'll have to wait for that to dry. So a lot of um, some of the darker parts of the snow that we painted earlier is still showing through and we could use that as kind of more darker shadowy parts. We just want to create some variation of color with this snow. Instead of it being just solid white, we have blues in there and a little bit of black from the background still kind of showing through as well. Next, I am going to be painting the branches. So this is an optional step, add something pretty in the background. Um, if you don't want to do the branches, you don't have to, you can just add snow in the background. Um, so for the branches, I'm using the number four round brush, Burt Sienna mixed with titanium white. So I'm going to mix about equal parts brown and white just because um, the brown alone is kind of dark. It won't really show up. I'm just taking this. It also helps add a little bit of water to that if it's not flowing very easily, but just a, a stem with a few branches that are kind of branching off from the first stem. So your first stem is a little bit thicker. You want to kind of release the pressure of the brush so that it gets looser and thinner and goes to more of like a point. So kind of loose, wavy branches off. And then the base is a little bit thicker. And for the pine needles, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can paint the pine needles individually with the round brush. So I'll show you both ways. I ended up liking the bright brush better than using the round brush. You want to mix a, so I'm mixing green, yellow, and white together. And a little bit loose with the water to kind of thin it down a bit. Twist it because these are small strokes. If it's not showing up right away, you might want to add some white to your brush to kind of get it to pop and be brighter because green is a really translucent color. No matter what you do with it, you got to add white to it for it to show up against a black background. But you can see how adding that white makes it show up a little bit better. So you can do a round brush, but I like the look of the bright brush. So if you use the tip, of that bright brush. You're going to create more pointy looking strokes because we're using the tip of that. And I'm just painting little pine needle lines. They're all kind of pointing downwards. And you want to vary your colors. So sometimes I'm loading in more of the darker green. Sometimes I'm grabbing a little bit more white and it's just creating sharp pointed strokes. So all pointing the same direction. And you wanna do this on each of your little branches that you painted. Likely they'll have to overlap each other because the branches are so close to each other. So it might look a little bit messy, but that's okay. So right here, this one overlapped a whole bunch of, but to kind of overcome that, I grabbed a little bit more white overlapped and we'll do another lighter layer over that and then made that branch kind of darker 
so it stood out a little bit better. And then on the tips of each of those branches, did like a little dot, little notch on the tip of those with brown or black. So you just want to kind of repeat that for each of your little branches. Then you want to go ahead and rinse and dry and grab white on your brush. I'm going to load my palette with some more titanium white. So we're going to do a lighter layer over our little pine needles. And it's okay if some of this white mixes with the green. So I'm going back over my pine needles with the white but not covering everything. So this is going to give that brighter highlight to these. And notice how I'm not doing it to all of the needles. That would take a long time to do. Um, just a few of them gives that brighter white snow effect on our pine needles. Then I want to go ahead and do a little layer of snow on the base of our snow globe. So I'm going to use white on the tip of the brush. See how I'm just kind of overlapping that to kind of make it look like it's nestled in the snow. It's a little bit, we don't want, want to overlap it too much. We don't want to lose the shape. Just a little bit of white. And if you're feeling extra brave, you can take black, mix your black with the white. So it's a very, very light gray. You don't want to use too much black here. I'm just going to do a little bit of shadowing on the lower left part kind of angled the lower left area to make it look like that snow globe is kind of casting a little bit of a shadow in the snow. Just a little bit, not too much. We can always go back over with some brighter white, little short choppy strokes. And then I can take that white and just kind of add that throughout the snow. Um, I don't want to take away from any of those darker tones that I have in the snow, but just a little bit of white here and there adds some more texture in the snow area. In this next step, I'm going to show you how to do the glare on the glass to make it look like a clear glass snow globe. And I do that by doing the dry brush technique. So basically, we're gonna use the 12 bright brush. If you feel more comfortable using the round brush, you're welcome to use the round brush for this. We'll kind of test out what feels better for you. We're gonna load the brush in the titanium white and wipe almost all that paint off the brush. There should only be a little bit of paint on the brush. Go ahead and test it out. It should be a very, very translucent layer, very thin. And I'm gonna do this on the left side of the snow globe. I'm just going to paint a curve, curved dry brush line on the left side and on the right side as well. It should be very, very light, almost the same lightness as the smoke that we did that was coming out of the chimney. So you just wanna make sure that um, it's see-through, it's very light. I'm doing it on the inside curve. There's black, um, a black slither, between the part of the circle that we outlined and what we are highlighting right now. So you wanna leave that black, the, the glare does not touch that white circle on the outer part. And then I did two layers. So the first layer was a little bit more dimmer. This second layer, I'm adding a little bit more white in the middle of it, making it a little bit thinner in the middle so that it's slightly brighter. So there's two different like levels of brightness. There's kind of a dim part and then a little bit of a brighter part in the middle part. Um, but that's it. We're not adding glare all over the place. It's a lot of that black background should be showing through because it's glass. We don't need to be painting um, the frosty part of the, all of the glass. So just on the left and just on the right, is enough to give it that glass effect. 
and then just in the center of it, a little bit pop of brighter white, but don't go crazy and add that all over the place. Then at this point, if you need to touch up your snow globe edge or the inner black slither that's on the inside part of the circle, you can do that now with the Mars Black. So I'm going to use my round brush and the Mars Black color. And I'm just going to loosely outline the edge of that to kind of touch up that circle. So make sure that it's rounded. I'm trying not to cover up any of that white, but I'm just kind of smoothing out that circle on the outer edge of it. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the inner part of the snow globe as well. So there's a black slither line on the inside edge of our snow globe. On the inside part. It's not really visible until you get to like the bottom snow area. So none of that glare should be touching that outer white circle. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a highlight to the base. I'm going to rinse my round brush off and grab the titanium white. I'm going to do the highlight over here on the left. So I'll do kind of a diagonal line and then kind of form an L shape and then take my finger and just kind of smear that so it kind of drags that white paint in a curved direction. So it's just a pop of brighter color on the left side of the brace of the base to give it kind of a shiny look. And then we can start adding these fun little blurry dots in the background. So to do that, I'm using the round brush and the titanium white, making a little dot. And before it dries, I'm taking my index finger and smearing it to form a blurry circle, kind of a bokeh effect. Just taking my finger, smearing it, and then I can add a little white dot in the center, kind of brightens up the center. So you can do these in like clusters. And then we can also do actual snow flurry dots throughout the painting. So I'm gonna do a combination of the blurry dots and then after doing the blurry dots, I'm going to do little white snow dots all throughout the background. So after you're done with all your blurry dots, you can go in and add individual snow dots throughout. If you wanted to, you can use a toothbrush to do the little fine little dots of white specks. A lot of these blurry light things I'm doing, like the dot in the center, kind of makes the center super bright. So I'm varying the dots. Some are very, very tiny. Some are a little bit thicker. They're going in clusters. They're not all evenly spaced apart. And 
And then I'm going to use the red. So that's that naphthol crimson color. I'm gonna do little berries. If that red isn't showing up bright, you can always do your first layer white, wait for the white to dry and then paint the red over it. So some of these have two berries, some have one. Not all the branches have to have berries, but it's just a nice pop of color. If you wanted to, you can have ornaments um, hanging from the branches. And then on the edges of the berries, we can do little white dots. So I'm just taking a clean round brush, titanium white, little dots on the edges of the berries. And lastly, I did a little bit of a snowy edge on the branches. So on the top of this one and on the top of this one. And that is the conclusion of how to paint snow cabin in a snow globe. In the written instructions of this tutorial, I do demonstrate how you can put a quote or a name on the base. So you can use a paint pen to write a word on that blue base of the snow globe. So another final touch you can do. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.